Among the characteristics of narcissism is not only pathological jealousy, but also apparently that narcissists think that other people are jealous of them. Does that mean that every time you think another person is jealous of you, that automatically makes you a narcissist? Well, sometimes other people's jealousy of you is very real. I argue especially so in a workplace bullying environment. In fact, a workplace bullying environment is saturated with so much jealousy, these people might want to tone it down a bit. Adult human psychology is complicated, so when we are doing a cause-effect analysis, it's difficult to isolate variables and identify only one influencing factor. But if, like me, your favorite question is why, and you want easy answers and simple solutions, this is it. Why do workplace bullies bully? It's the green-eyed monster. I argue also that workplace bullying is different from schoolyard bullying, and here is one way in which they are different. On the schoolyard playground or in the middle school lunchroom, most often the target of bullying is the one who is different. The one with red hair, the one who is heavy, the person of color, etc. It has been said that in the workplace, the target of bullying is the star. Workplace bullying is cutting down tall trees and eliminating the best and the brightest so the bullies don't look bad. How do you know workplace bullies are jealous of you? The same way you know they're bullying you. It's obvious. Even Stevie Wonder could see it, and it don't take Miss Cleo with the crystal ball to figure out exactly what these people's problem with you really is. So today on my channel, it's story time. I'm going to read an excerpt from my essay on workplace bullying entitled, The Voice of Jealousy. What is the voice of jealousy? Jealousy is scapegoating, it is projecting, and it is stunning hypocrisy. Jealousy means you're perfect. You have a perfect life. You do not have problems, you do not have pain, you do not suffer, you did not work for your blessings, you did not earn them in a past life, for example. Everything was just handed to you on a silver platter. You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth. You have luxury. You have privilege. They can be mean to you, they can make fun of you, they can do or say anything they want to you, and you have to let them because you have a better life than they do. They are entitled. They are justified. Jealousy means they have to justify why you have a better life than they do. They need the justification for themselves, but they have to verbalize it to you. They need your understanding. If you have clear skin and they don't, it's because you are rich and they are not, and they have to tell you that. If you have a coat, even if that coat is over 10 years old and they don't, it's because they come from a poor country and you don't, and they have to tell you that. If you exercise and they don't, it's because they have a kid and you don't, and they have to tell you that. I don't have that luxury. Jealousy means you think you're better, you think you're perfect, you think you're all that and a bag of chips. You are talking down to them. Who do you think you are? You are not just happy and confident with self-esteem. You are full of yourself. You are arrogant, smug, stuck up, a snob. You are pleased and satisfied with yourself. They are very concerned with what you think about yourself. You have the nerve, the audacity, the unmitigated gall to approach them in a spirit of authentic, genuine, pure, real, and sincere equality without any artifice or pretense. How dare you walk in here feeling good about yourself, with self-esteem, with confidence, without needing them, without asking for their approval, without caring about their opinion of you? Who do you think you are? You need to be taken down a notch or two. You are not allowed to know your own blessings. You have to let them give them to you. You are not allowed to know you look good. You have to be insecure. You have to think you're fat so they can tell you you're not. You are not allowed to be competent and to know your work is good. You have to let them give you advice. You have to be weak so they can feel strong. Jealousy means you are scrutinized. They can't stop staring at you. Everything you do, everything you say, every move or sound you make, it is such a big deal. Such a big deal everywhere you go. If you cough, sneeze, blow your nose, or sniff, it is a major event. They have to talk about it. Everything you eat, everything you drink, everything you wear, every aspect of your appearance, they will talk about it for days. You cannot move, you cannot speak, you cannot look anywhere, you cannot make a sound, you cannot even breathe, or they will say something about it. It will set the gossip wildfire blazing. Every part of you, no matter how small, must be pointed out, discussed, blown out of proportion and analyzed in detail. What are they looking for? Something, anything, negative. They need you to be as ugly as you make them feel. They need proof that you are not as perfect as they think you are. From the moment they meet you, they are waiting for that, something, just anything, to reject you before you have a chance to reject them. 
I'm going to hurt you before you have a chance to hurt me. She can't really be that good. Well, I never liked you anyway. They stand there watching you, waiting for you to mess up, picking at your flaws no matter how petty. If you do anything wrong, they will pounce on it like cats on a mouse. If you drop something on the floor, they will have a field day. If you say anything, they will explode. They will make fun of you for days. You are their celebrity. Did they notice the third eyelash from the right, how it's not in complete alignment with the others? Jealousy means everything you do is wrong and nothing you do is right. More correctly, everything you do that is different from them is wrong. They are very suspicious of you. You must be getting away with something. You are different from them. You do things differently and different is wrong. No matter what you do, you cannot win. Your eyebrows are too thick and too thin at the same time. If you dress well, you are showing off. You don't belong. But if you dress down, they will try to clean you up. You need to eat like they do because your thinness makes them feel bad about themselves. But if you do eat or even drink something, they will criticize that too. You are not working because no one can eat or drink and work at the same time. When you are happy, you are over the top too much. You are trying to be the center of attention. You are trying to steal the show. You are overshadowing, upstaging, outdoing, and you are enjoying it. And when you smile, you are flirting. If you talk to any man within a 10 mile radius or just make eye contact with him, you are flirting with him. But when you do not smile, you are not happy. You are so serious. You're a dark, negative person. You're bringing everybody else down. So negative. Why aren't you happy? What's wrong? Are you okay? Then they judge, criticize, and make fun of everything you do that makes you happy because you are happy without needing them. You don't need them for your happiness. You are happy by yourself. You are happy with yourself. You also don't work. They work hard, so that means that no one else does, especially you. You don't want to work. You just want to do your personal stuff. You're doing something not work-related. You are slacking off. And yet they can spend hours gossiping about you on company time and pay. Reading international news on your lunch break to be an interesting person who is educated about the world is wrong. But wasting work hours to gossip about a coworker is right. Jealousy means there is a double standard. It means you are always held to a different standard, a higher standard than everybody else. You have to eat lunch with the department, even though not one, not two, but three employees around you are not only not expected to go, but also never even invited. In fact, no one has even bothered to learn those people's names. But you have to walk into a room full of 15 people who will pounce on you like a pack of wild dogs because they all want a piece of you. You have to socialize more with other employees even though you already go to social events while other employees go to none. Jealousy means you are perfect, but you are also dirty and disgusting. They literally run to get away from you. When you pass them or move closer to them, they move or turn away. They flinch, they snort, they hold their noses, they wave their hands in front of their faces. You smell bad. They act distracted, they start muttering to themselves, they make it clear they don't want you around, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to engage with you, they are afraid of you. They cannot be kind to you, just be kind. They don't have it in them. Jealousy means you are stupid, lazy, and full of yourself in that order. If you look a certain way, you can't be intelligent too, not at the same time. That is not possible. If you look a certain way, you must also be lazy because nobody can work hard and look good at the same time. That is not possible. You are rich. You are independently wealthy, so you don't have to work. They would rather hate and hurt an innocent person than take the time and do the work to understand and accept someone who is different. But you are the one who is lazy. And you are so full of yourself. But they can't stop staring at you. Jealousy means you are drama. You are a bad apple who just wants to stir things up. You are causing trouble. You are a troublemaker. When they meet you, they cannot control the emotion they feel in your presence. When you meet them, you feel absolutely nothing. But you are the one who is dramatic. You are the one who is emotional. Once again, you have to spend your entire life suffering because of other people's insecurities. Jealousy means they are worried about you. When you finally respond to their bullying, you stop smiling. You just don't seem very happy. You're not smiling. Your dislike of their bullying provides them the opportunity they need to give advice, to tell you what to do. You need to be careful. If you express any vulnerability at all, they will turn it into unsolicited advice. If you are honest about any problem you have in life, they will swoop in like vultures on the battlefield. They really get into it. 
If you reveal that you have had relationship problems, they get very excited. If you say you have problems with your mother or your sister, they will launch into a 30-minute monologue about everything you need to do to fix the problem, even though you already have. If you had an abusive relationship, they will prepare another speech delivered in your face about what you need to do to fix the problem, even though you already have. If you have problems at home, problems with anything, any, any problem at all, well, they have some advice for you. They cannot just listen compassionately. They have to give advice. It has nothing to do with helping you at all. They don't care about you. It's a power trip. Unsolicited advice is absolutely nothing more than a form of control and domination to make you subordinate, weak, helpless, powerless. Basically, jealousy means you are not human. Because you are not human, you do not suffer. Remember, you are perfect. You have no problems and no pain, and you are not allowed to exist. You are not a human being, and you are not allowed to exist on this planet. You cannot earn money because you don't deserve that. You already have that. You know that. So you don't deserve anything else. You don't deserve anything good in life because you don't have the right to live. You don't have the right to exist at all. They can eliminate you from the workplace and deprive you of income because you don't deserve income. You don't deserve anything good because you don't have the right to exist at all because you are not a human being in the first place. Even though you do not suffer because you are not human, they need to see you suffer. These people need to see tears. That's why they stare at you. Did they hurt you as much as they wanted to? If they don't see you on the floor, curled up in a ball crying, they don't know you're human. What are workplace bullies so pathologically jealous of? Well, a TED Talk on jealousy states that what people are really jealous of is not so much your boat, not necessarily material things like your money, your stuff, or your physical appearance, but rather intangible qualities of a person's character, sweetness, confidence, or decency and fairness. And a Wall Street Journal article details psychological studies that identify the one thing people are jealous of the most and that's hope. Workplace bullies say they want you to be happy and will criticize and ridicule you for being or appearing unhappy all while they take tremendous pleasure in your suffering. Like all narcissists, workplace bullies are destructive. They are destroyers. They cannot create anything because they are permanently disconnected from the creator. And what they want to destroy the most is your hope your optimism and enthusiasm for a better world, which they will dismiss as immature and childish. Their hatred of your hope explains their snide, sneering, contempt, and ridicule for anything you do outside of the workplace, any studies, hobbies, or charitable or humanitarian endeavors that you do to improve yourself, your life, and your world, and to expand your abundance. Like all narcissists, workplace bullies want to create for the rest of us the same dark, ugly world they inhabit all of the time, which is one of helplessness and hopelessness. And in English, there's a synonym for hopelessness, and that's despair, from the French, désespoir, unhope. What workplace bullies also hate is your joy. We can see the word joy in the portmanteau loaned from German, forgive my pronunciation, schadenfreude, which literally means damaged joy and is often associated with narcissism, but that's not exactly what's happening here. People experience schadenfreude when they witness as passive observers some misfortune befall another person of whom they are envious. For example, a beautiful and rich celebrity files for divorce. We can see schadenfreude sometimes in the bystanders to workplace bullying who in the end reveal themselves as covert narcissists who never really were bystanders all along because they take pleasure in what happens to the target of workplace bullying who is bullied and then finally eliminated, again, they're just glad it's not them. But when it comes to the workplace bullies themselves, this is not an indirect, passive observation. This is a direct assault on your joy. A lot of people are happy or say they are happy. I have a new phone, I'm happy. I have a new car, I'm happy. I'm getting married, I'm happy. I'm having a baby, I'm happy. How many adults would you describe as joyful? The fifth house in astrology is the Leo house. It's where I have my son. 
like all houses in astrology, it has one basic meaning and many additional layers of associated meaning because adult human psychology is complicated. The basic meaning of the fifth house is creativity, entertainment, fun, artistry, and yes, joy. And because it is the house of creativity, what else do we create in our lives? It's also the house of children. So for thousands of years, joy is something that has always been associated with children. If you are a naturally joyful person, then prepare to be called immature for that too. And if you hear the immature insult from a male workplace bully and you are a woman, let me go ahead and translate that one for you. All that means is that he can't have sex with you. Apparently, the only way to be mature, according to narcissistic workplace bullies, is to radiate a dour, sullen joylessness and resign oneself to cynicism. So that's a summary of a point I want to make about jealousy as a cause of workplace bullying. To read more, I've written an essay on workplace bullying. It's on my website. I include that information in the description. The reason that I create this video series is to establish a forum where targets of workplace bullying can share their stories and experiences in a kind of support group so you can know, number one, you're not crazy. Workplace bullying is real and your feelings are perfectly valid and justified. And number two, you're not alone. Unfortunately, countless others have experienced the same thing. So I look forward to reading your comments and I'll try to respond. Take care.